Hey, welcome back to InfoGamer. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to create a character selection menu system, or in this case, a spaceship selection menu system. Now, the cool thing about this menu system is that it incorporates the 3D models of our spaceships in the menu system. Now, first off, I'd like to demonstrate what we're going to be creating in this video, and then we'll get to work. So here I have our season one project open inside of Unity, and I've just recently created all of these new UI graphics. And I think it's starting to look a lot better than what it was previously. Now the game mechanic that we're going to be creating in this video is the ability to scroll through all the different ships that we'll have within our scene. So if I left click in my scene and then drag my mouse to the left, you can see how the spaceships shift to the left. I can also click on the different spaceships I have lined up, and it will then center that spaceship in my scene. And as I select a spaceship, as I've done, it changes a value of a variable in one of our scripts to indicate that we have selected that ship. In the future, we'll then be able to use that variable to instantiate that ship as our player ship in the multiplayer scene. In the future, we'll also be able to incorporate a store with in-app purchases using this menu system. So now that we have an idea of what we're going to be creating in this video, let's get into the development. Now before we begin, make sure that you subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you can get updates when we publish new videos. Alright, so the first thing that we need to have are some character models. Now at this point in time, I only have this one spaceship, and so I'm using this spaceship as the default spaceship and as well a placeholder for all the other spaceships that we're going to have in our game. Now if you don't have character models at this point in time, you can just use simple cubes or spheres or capsules, whatever you want. But I'll end up swapping this model out as a placeholder with the models of the other spaceships once I have them. And so here I have three copies of my spaceship, and they're all child to an empty game object, which is called Ships in Store. And this empty game object is currently centered at the origin of our scene. Now the position for your character models might be different for you depending on how far apart you want each character model to be. Now the position of the first spaceship is at 001, the position of the second spaceship is 701, and the position of the third spaceship is 1401. This way they're all in a straight line on the x-axis. The important thing to have is that they're in a straight line, that way we can scroll through them, and that they're evenly spaced. And so there's seven units between each one of my spaceships. Now I'm going to want to have more than just three spaceships, and so I'm going to add my spaceships going left to right. And so the position of a fourth spaceship would be 2101. Now that we have our character models positioned where we want them to be, let's start creating a UI system that will allow us to select them. Now to create this menu system, we want to use what's called a world space canvas. And so I'm going to right click in our hierarchy, go down to UI, and select canvas. Then over in the inspector, we're going to use the drop down menu for render mode and select world space. Now for this canvas, I have my width at 1920 and my height at 1080. I'm then going to center this in my scene and rotate it down by 90 degrees in the X axis. Now we're actually going to need to move it up in the Y direction by two units, and that way our canvas will be over top of our spaceships. The next thing that we need to do is scale down our canvas. So with the canvas, it's very important that you keep the resolution high, but then you scale it down to the size that you need. And so I'm going to scale it down to 0 0.01 in the X and 0 0.01 in the Y. And here you can see that it's now the right size for our spaceships. Now the next thing that we need to do is create what's called a scroll rect. But before we do that, I'm going to rename this canvas to Shop Canvas. I'm then going to right click on my canvas go down to UI and select Image. Now what we need to do is make this image 300 in height, and I'm also going to move it up in the Y direction so that it's more overlapping the first spaceship. I'm then going to click on Add Component, and I'm going to search for Scroll Rect and select it. We then want to turn off the vertical movement for our Scroll Rect and just keep horizontal. 
We're then going to add another UI image as a child to our scroll rect object. So I'm going to right click on our scroll rect. I'm going to go down to UI and select image. We can then rename our scroll rect object to scroll rect. And we're going to rename our new child object to content. I'm then going to change the color of our content image so that it stands out from our scroll rect. Then for now, we're going to move the pivot of our content object to zero in the X and 0.5 in the Y. We might have to play around with this value in the future, but this will do. I'm then going to set the width of this object to 1400. And if my math is correct, then this should bring the right hand edge of our content image right above our third ship. I'm then going to select our scroll rect and I'm going to change the movement type to clamped. This will make it so that we can't scroll past the last ship. Now let's select our content object and drag it into the content field of our scroll rect component. The next thing that we want to do is add in some buttons to our content object. So I'm going to right click on our content object, go down to UI and select button. And we want to have one of these buttons for every spaceship in our store. And so we're going to create one button and then we're going to duplicate it over and over. For the anchor positioning, we want to position it in the left middle of our content object. I'm then going to move its X position to zero and its Y position should also be zero. And this will put the button right over top of my spaceship. I'm then going to expand the width and height to 300 each. I'm then going to rename this button to Spaceship1. And then we can duplicate this button twice by pressing Control D. We're then going to move the second button to 700. And the third button we're going to position at 1400. Now if we wanted to, we could move everything down closer to the spaceship so that the button fits more perfectly over top of the spaceship. And one thing I think I might want to do is make our content object a little taller. Because this is essentially the clickable area that allows us to scroll through all our different spaceships. And so now I'm going to click play. And here you can see that our content object now can move from left to right. And that looks pretty good. So now that we've created this menu system and our spaceships match up with the buttons, we can select our spaceships in store and drag it on to our content object. So now when I press play and I click on our content object, you can see that our spaceships move in sync with our content object and they line up with our buttons. And so now what I can do is I can turn down the alpha channel of our buttons, our content object, and our scroll rect. So now we can move our spaceships without seeing the menu system over top of them. And then what we still need to do is make it so that when a player clicks the button, it selects that spaceship. Now one cool thing about our buttons is that they have these text objects attached to them. And so if I select these text objects, I can change the color of the text, the font of the text, and the name of the spaceships. We can also reposition our text objects so that they're floating above or below our spaceships. And so now when I click play, you can see that our spaceships have cool texts and names floating below each spaceship. And those text objects move in sync with our spaceships. Now it looks like I'm running into a problem with being able to get the last spaceship over to the center of my scene. To fix this, I'm going to unparent my spaceships in store from my content game object. And finally, I'm going to set the width of my content object to 1500. I'm going to reparent my spaceships to my content object. And now you can see that I can move the last spaceship to the center of my scene. 
The problem was that my content object was too small for the scroll rect. All right, so now that you know how to design this menu system visually, let's talk about the code that I have behind it. Now I've created two scripts. One is called store button and the other is called store controller. Let's open up both of these inside Visual Studios. Now we'll start with the store controller. Inside this script, we have a few variables. The first one is public static vector three called new pose. The next one is a public static bool called select move. The next one is a public transform called store container. And the last one is a public float called lerp time. Then the only code that we have in this script is contained within our update function. The first thing that we have is an if statement that checks to see if the store container dot position does not equal our new pose. And we're also checking to see if select move is true. If all of these conditions are true, then it means that we want to lerp our store container to the new position. And so I'm calling store container dot position equals vector three dot lerp. For the first value, we're passing in our store container dot position. For the second value, we're passing in the new pose. And then for the last value, we're passing in lerp time times time dot delta time. We then also have this if statement where we're checking to see if the distance between our store containers position and the new position is less than 0.1 f. If it is less than 0.1 f, then we're setting our store container dot position equal to new pose and we're setting select move equal to false. This if statement gives our lerp movement a little buffer so that if our store container is close enough to our new pose position, then it just becomes the new pose position. And that way we don't just keep lerping and trying to get it closer and closer to that position, but never actually being on that position. So that's all the code that we need for our store container script. Now let's go over to the store button script. Inside our store button script, we have two variables. The first one is a public transform called center store. The next one is a public transform called store container. We then have two public void functions. The first one is called on click ship. Inside this function, we are setting a local float variable called this equal to the x position of our center store variable minus the x position of the current transform of the object that this script is attached to. We're then setting our static new pose variable of our store controller script equal to a new vector three. The X value is the X position of our store container plus the dist variable. The Y value is just the Y position of our store container and the Z value is the Z position of our store container. We're then setting our select move variable of our store controller script equal to true. So essentially this function is saying, hey, we have a new position that we want our container object to lerp to. And then over in our store controller script, this update function is what does that action. Our second public function, which I've called select ship, has a parameter of type int, which is called which ship. Inside this function, I'm setting another int variable called my ship, which belongs to a singleton of another script called persistent data. And I'm setting it equal to our which ship parameter. Once we have all of these scripts, we can save both of them by clicking our save all button and we'll go back to Unity. Inside Unity, we can attach our store controller script to either our shop canvas, our scroll rect, or our content object. I've attached it to our scroll rect. We then want to set our variables and I've set our store container to the content object and I've set lerp time equal to five. We then want to attach our store button script to each of our buttons in this menu system. We can then set all of the variables equal to the scroll rect object for our center store and our content object for the store container. Then what we need to do is select each of the buttons and add two on-click events. We're then going to drag in our store button script to both of these events. For the first function, we want to select our on-click ship. And for the second function, we want to select our select ship function. 
We then want to set the parameter of this function for our first button equal to zero, for our second button equal to one, and for our third button equal to two. And that should be it. And so with these scripts and with this setup in Unity, you should now have a working character selection system. And so once again, if I click on my content object, I can drag the ships to the left or to the right. And if I click on one of the buttons, it will then center that ship in the scene. And if I select one of my ships, it will set the my ship variable of my persistent data script. And so right here, you can see that it's a one. If I click on the first ship, it's now a zero. If I click on the last ship, it's now a two. And since this value belongs to a singleton that is not destroyed when I load into my multiplayer scene, I can then use that value to determine which spaceship model I want to instantiate for my player. And so that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson on how to create a character selection system using 3D models for any game that you create in Unity. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you did, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you have any questions, make sure that you leave them in the comments below, or you can join our Discord server. Also, make sure that you subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date on all our latest videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>